Welcome back guys. Now let's talk a brief overview of polyploidies. So what are polyploidies? Now polyploidies, so let me talk about this term. So we have already talked about that. So polyploidy means the number of a chromosome increment in set. So if there is two set of chromosome usually present inside the cell, the set number will be increased. So let's say here this is a cell, inside that it's a nucleus, we are having two set of the chromosome. So ultimate set number of the chromosome is 2n, right, or diploidic situation. Now after that a new set of chromosome being added due to non-disjunction. Now it becomes 3n instead of 2n. So the number of chromosome increased is by set, not by chromosome number. So this is type, this type of non-disjunction outcome is termed as polyploidy. Okay, so polyploidy can be of this 3n from 2n, it's called a triploid because three set of chromosome is there. If there is four set of chromosome, it will be called tetraploid. If there is five set, it will be called pentaploid. If it's six uh, set, it will be called hexaploid and so on. So polyploidy can be divided in two different types. One is auto polyploids and another one is called Allopolyploids, autopolyploids, and allopolyploids. Now, in autopolyploid, it means, as the name suggests, all auto means self. So, the polyploidic situation arised inside the cell due to the cell non disjunction during the cell division, right? But in case of allopolyploids, the allopolyploidic situation or the polyploidic situation or the increment of chromosome number in set occurs due to due to the fuse of two different cells of two different species right so if non disjunction occurs between same species it will be called as autopolyploids if non disjunction occurs between different species it will be called allopolyploids okay in allopolyploids, normally autopolyploids occur due to the mitosis non-disjunction. Non but allopolyploids is kind of different, right? So let's talk a little bit about the allopolyploid here. So in allopolyploids, let's say there are two variety of species. So let's say species 1, this is species 2. Now let me draw the different chromosome number in different colors. So let's say species 1 is having, uh, say, three set of chromosomes species 2 is instead having two set of chromosome okay now once they are fused in such a way so what they produce they will produce their gametes so gametogenesis let me write gametogenesis now due to this gametogenesis so it should be e anyways so what it produces here it produces in both this way. This one produces three. So the chromosome number they will produce the haploid number three. So here it is three. So this is two n equals to six. So n equals three in this case. So again here two n equals four in this case four chromosomes. Now n equals two. So this will produce two chromosomes. Okay. Then they will be fuse. There will be fusion and the fusion will generate the zygote, right? So let me bring the zygote in this color. So the zygote that they form in this case, this one is having total number of five chromosomes, right? So here it is having n equals to five. So total number of chromosome is five in this case of this zygote formed from two different species after the fusion of the gamete. So once it produces this kind of things, this kind of mixed from two different species, the zygote, 5, the number of chromosome is 5. Now the number of chromosome 5 is not sufficient to further cell division because it is not having any even number of chromosome. Remind you, this is very, very important to have even number of chromosome prior to cell division so that the cell division occurs properly and chromosome segregation occurs properly. Now if it is having five number of chromosomes in this zygotic phase, the cell will not cell will grow, it divides, it produces the offspring. But the ability for this offspring to produce gamete 
will be lost. So the gamete production ability will be lost. So in, in term we can say this type of offspring usually becomes sterile. Right? So they won't become any more fertile. Because if it is having the chromosome number 5, so it's not N actually, sorry, it's 2N, sorry. It's 2N because the fusion of 2Ns, it's 2N, zygote. Now if it is having the 2N number 5, so how many number of gap chromosome in the gamete will present? 5 divided by 2, 2.5 but we never have a 2.5 number of chromosome. Chromosome never presents in that kind of fraction. It should be in a perfect value like 2, 3, 4, 5 in this way. Right? So this type of offspring usually becomes sterile. So let me write. They become sterile due to this odd number of chromosomes. Right? In 2N. Now, <coughs> excuse me. That's the reason that in many cases when we fuse two different species, when you force two different species to breed together, it produces sterile offsprings like ligon. If you use tiger and lion to produce ligon, the ligon is for sterile. If we produce mules, right? And fusion between them again, they are sterile. So that's the different problems regarding this point. But some of them sometimes revert back this sterility and produce and can be fertile. How? Now imagine this is the number of chromosome inside the cell. Now if they will trigger this, this chromosome to divide and multiply inside the host cell, then the number of chromosome will be doubled. Now if we are having an odd number, if we double the number, the outcome will be even. Right? So that's the technique they want to follow. So if this is the case, again I'm drawing here from this point, after the chromosome duplication, what they can produce is this. So the total number of chromosome now can become 10. So here 2n becomes 10. So this can produce gametogenesis. Through the gametogenesis, it can produce <coughs> So it can produce gametes which is having, so it can produce this gamete which is having number n number of 5. So this gamete can be produced so they become fertile again, right? So this thing can be possible, right? So in case of allopolyploids, if they revert back their fertility by duplicating their chromosome, that's a very important event. And that's the way we usually produce polyploid seeds, like seedless polyploid plant, like seedless watermelon, right? Or long grain wheat. This is the way of producing them. So instigate them to duplicate the number of chromosome inside so that they produce this kind of, uh, they, so that they become fertile and it can produce, right? So <coughs> here, After this step, they produce this. So that's how they can reproduce very easily. And this type of cells, which are having the number of chromosome duplicated due from two different species fusion or chromosome fusion, is termed as amphidiploid. Is termed as amphidiploids. So amphidiploids is a very important situation. Why it is called amphidiploid? Because amphi means both. So this diploid situation arised due to the fusion of two different species. Both the species together to produce this. Okay. So that's how it produces that. So that's all about all of, uh, polyploids. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.